Hello everyone, welcome you all in the lecture of IC engine fuel and lubricants. This lecture will be on engine lubrication. This is first lecture on the engine lubrication. This is the contents for this lecture, introduction about the lubrication system, engine friction, effect of engine variables on engine friction, determination of engine friction and we will do a numerical problem on the engine friction. So, first of all what is lubrication system? as you know that lubrication means smoothening your operation. When two surfaces met then there will be friction generation. Like if you see in the very simple in IC engine I, because this is subject is for IC engine. So, we will take an example of IC engine here reciprocating engine is there this is your piston connecting rod. So, the reciprocating motion of the cylinder piston is converted into the rotary motion. So, when this piston this part is piston and this part is cylinder when they come into contact at these points these points. So, there will be friction losses and if this is not lubricated it will remove the uh, liquid uh, sorry this surface of the material of piston as well as of the cylinder. Also there are some bearings these are some joints because this is the joints for this and this link. So, here if there is no uh, lubrication there are also two mating surfaces. So, that it will be damaged after a few time or after few number of cycles. So, you all know that the power lost in friction is known as friction power and what is indicated power? So, indicated power is that power which is the actual power of the engine indicated value which is highest value because you are burning your fuel. So, burning your fuel means chemical energy of the fuel is converted into the first indicated power. So, it is maximum amount. Then from indicated power the power is lost during the motion of this piston and cylinder and this uh, other joints all the components there are friction. So, this power is lost. So, this is known as friction power and the power you actually feel you actually in the useful form is known as brake power. So, it is formulated as friction power is equal to indicated power minus brake power I p stand for indicated power. You take it in kilowatt. Similarly, brake power B p is kilowatt and F p is friction power means this power is lost to overcome the friction. friction. So, it includes the power required to drive the compressor or a scheme engine pump and the power required to drive engine auxiliaries such as oil pump coolant pump etcetera and fan etcetera. So, this also includes all these powers also friction power includes all these also all these powers also to running the auxiliary components also. So, useful power is only the brake power. So, due to the increase in friction with high compression ratio you all know that what is compression ratio it is the volume before compression to the volume after compression. So, compression ratio higher the compression ratio in a unit uh, 2 in unit 1 or 2 we have discussed that higher the compression is required for case for the case of um, either diesel or uh, petrol cycle if you increase the compression ratio the power or the efficiency is improved. So, higher the compression ratio efficiency will be improved, but you if you are increasing the friction 
so increasing friction with the higher compression ratio also. The designer tends to keep the actual compression ratio as low as possible. So, at the same time you are increasing compression ratio efficiency improving, but friction is also increased. So, it can be seen that after a certain compression ratio, after a certain compression ratio, the gain in efficiency due to increase in compression ratio is less than the loss of power in friction. Not only that, increased friction horsepower which is ultimately dissipated as heat to cooling water also increases the pump and fan power requirements also. So, it should be optimum, compression ratio should be optimum. It is not as a thumb rule that you are increasing compression ratio and each and everything will go in the right way. So, at the same time you are increasing compression ratio, you need more uh, heavy devices auxil auxiliary components and, and there will be more friction losses at the same time. So, engine friction is also greatly affected by the engine speeds. So, engine RPM also affects the engine friction. So, we will see it later. So, friction generally refer to the contact force acting between surface in relative motion. In engine frictional losses are mainly due to sliding as well as rotational parts, we have discussed it. So, usually engine friction is expressed in terms of frictional loss or friction power. Frictional friction not only cause wear of the parts, but also generates heat results in loss of engine power and reduces the life of the mating parts. Because if heat is generated during the friction, it may remove the oil film, lubricating oil film also. So, it uh, if there is more friction power is generated, <coughs> it means the, the there is a danger of removing the lubricating oil films. So, main parts of engine which required lubrication are the this is the different parts where the lubricate, lubrication is required. This is the crankshaft and main bearings, camshaft and camshaft bearings, these are the components of engine, piston rings and cylinder, timing gears or chain and sprocket, big end bearing of connecting rod and crank, valve and valve guide and other joints in valve mechanism and small end bearing of connecting rod and gudgeon pin. The following purpose are served by the lubrication. So, what are the purpose are solved? First is wear of mating parts is minimized. Second one loss of power in overcoming friction is reduced. Third one, heat produced due to conversion of friction into heat is removed. Heat generated due to burning of fuel is dissipated to some extent, thus lubricant acts as coolant also. So, lubricant is also, it is a wonderful line that lubricant acts as coolant also. Dust and dirt and other unwanted matter is washed away, thus it cleans the system. So, that is why for a uh, number of time, after a number of interval of time, we, uh, we exchange the older one uh, lubricating oil with the newer one, because this gets some dirt. So, to cool it, we use the new lubrication oil. Now, the carbon deposits are removed from the piston, piston ring cylinders also, these are also unwanted materials. A good oil seal develops between the piston rings and the cylinder which prevents escape of gases also. And the last one is shock produced between the moving parts, especially between journals and the bearings are absorbed this helps in reducing the noise in the engine. So, these are so many advantages of the uh, lubrication or lub using of lubricating oil in the engine. So, in brief, if the power to uh, drive the compressor 
and auxiliary is uh, neglected, the total engine friction can be divided in five components. In five components, these are crankcase mechanical friction, blow by losses, compression expansion pumping losses, we also called it, exhaust and inlet system throttling losses, combustion chamber pumping loop losses and last one is piston mechanical friction at this these are the uh, this this will be the total engine friction because we are removing we are not counting the compressor and auxiliaries power consumed here so this will be there so one by one we will discuss in, in brief so crankcase mechanical friction it is further uh, subdivided as bearing friction which increases with the rpm of the engine so bearing friction is come into this category crankcase mechanical friction means crankcase means that part in which all the components are uh, put there they are assembled there second one is valve gear friction it is also uh, that part crankcase mechanical friction and third one is pump and miscellaneous frictions so these uh, three uh, parts are the crankcase mechanical friction and it is uh, estimated experimentally that 15 to 20 percent because in the starting of the friction i have told you that about one third of your fuel energy goes into your waste so so the, that that part is 15 to 20 percent of the total engine friction is because of that so 15 to 20 percent if we take 100 percent friction losses or friction power loss in friction then 15 to 20 percent is because of the crankcase mechanical friction now the second one is blow by losses blow by losses what is that so it is the phenomena of leakage of combustion products past the piston and piston rings from the cylinder to the crankcase like this you can see this is your crankcase part that this is your piston connecting dot crank so it is moving reciprocating from top dead center to bottom dead center this part here and here some burnt gases are there so if these gases comes here in the this part is crankcase crankcase if it comes here it disturb the lubricating oil filled here so the blow by losses is the phenomena of leakage of combustion products past the piston and piston rings from the cylinder to the crankcase these losses depend upon the inlet pressure so it depends upon the pressure at this point pi and how it depends it depends square root of that square root of the pressure inlet and the compression ratio directly proportional to the compression ratio higher the compression ratio this loss if you increase the compression ratio that they, 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 there may be the tendency to increase this type of losses so blow by losses are reduced as the engine speed is increased so it is also depend upon th so it depends upon three things inlet pressure square root of that compression ratio directly proportional and it is directly proportional to the engine speed so blow by losses depends upon these three parameter then exhaust and inlet system throttling losses what is exhaust inlet uh, system throttling losses because we know that here is the let this is your inlet inlet valve exhaust valve so inlet valve and exhaust valve let this is inlet valve here the carburetor is there here is the air filter is also there air filter so air is coming here here fuel is added so these are the restrictions and also 
because of these restrictions the fuel or uh, air fuel mixture coming here through the induction part induction pipe. So, there will also be pressure drop. So, exhaust and inlet system throttling losses the work required to inhale fresh charge during suction stroke and exhaust the combustion products during the exhaust stroke is called the pumping frictional work. Similarly, this is the exhaust valve the products has to be removed from this exhaust valve. So, uh, it, it also it is known as pumping losses it is called the pumping frictional work you have seen in the PV diagram actual PV diagram that this is PV then it is something like this. So, this is negative work this is positive work. So, this is part is that exhaust and lead system throttling losses this is this is the uh, reason of that. Now, the combustion chamber pumping loop losses in the case of pre combustion chamber because uh, nowadays we are also using some uh, pre combustion combustion in the pre combustion and then it is passed to the main combustion chamber. So, in the case of pre combustion chamber engine can additional loss occurs in engines there are some additional losses. This is the loss occurring due to the pumping work required to pump gases into the out of the pre combustion chamber. <coughs> it depends upon the orifice size connecting to the pre combustion chamber and the main combustion chamber and the also the speed higher the speed greater is the loss and smaller the orifice size greater is the loss. So, the combustion chamber let this is the your main combustion chamber and here that is it is a pre combustion chamber and this pre combustion chamber is connected by some orifices and here fuel is first burnt here and that is burnt gases are passed here in the main combustion chamber this is main combustion chamber and this is pre combustion chamber. So, this is the orifice. So, it depends upon the orifice size connecting to the pre combustion chamber to the main combustion chamber and higher the speed greater is the loss and smaller the orifice size this this is the orifice size is smaller the value of D and uh, higher the uh, greater uh, higher will be the loss. So, the another one is piston friction uh, piston mechanical friction. So, it is further subdivided as viscous friction and non viscous friction. Non viscous fri friction is also divided as friction due to ring tension and friction due to friction due to gas pressure force behind the ring gas back pressure gas pressure issue means jo here the burnt gases are there. So, this is they exert some pressure on the piston. So, the non viscous friction is a friction due to ring tension and friction due to gas pressure force behind the ring. Now, the effect of engine variables on engine friction. The first effect is L by D ratio stroke by bore ratio. The effect is very small. Uh, at a high speeds the higher L by D ratio engine may have some disadvantages. Effect is very small, but if you talk about comparison in if some engine is having low speed and having another is having high speeds, but same L by D ratio, but the, there will be more uh, friction losses in the higher one. So, the first is effect of stroke bore ratio L by D ratio. Second one is for effect of cylinder size and number of cylinders you are using. So, the friction and economy improves as small number of large cylinders are used you can see from this diagram effect of number of cylinders on friction and uh, this is the percent change. So, here the friction as 
you are using 4 cylinder, this friction losses is this much amount. If you are using 8 cylinder, the friction amount is this much, you are using this. So, as number of cylinders are using, uh, there will be more friction losses. But at the same time, if you talk about the mileage, number of cylinders you are increasing, but the economy mileage is better, but friction is higher. Now, third one is effect of number of piston rings. So, the effect of number of piston rings, rings you can see here, here number of rings 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So, this you are if you are increasing the number of piston rings, friction losses are higher. Now, the effects of compression ratio, this is the effect of compression ratio. So, what is the effect of the compression ratio? The uh, friction mean effective FME EP stands for frictional mean effective pressure or it is a measure of friction power. So, frictional mean effective pressure increases as the compression ratio is increased. Here in the first slide I have discussed this, this discussed it uh, because more auxiliaries are needed for more compression ratio. So, the friction power is improved or it is higher. Then mechanical efficiencies either remains the same. You are uh, compression ratio increasing, mechanical efficiency may be um, same, but frictional power losses will be higher. So, constant or improves as the compression ratio is increased. Now, the another one is engine speed, engine RPM, engine speed. So, engine speed you can see here uh, the RPMs 0, 1000, 2000 and here is the friction power losses. So, as the RPMs are increases, the friction power is also increased. So, the best way uh, the engine friction increases rapidly as the speed increases. So, friction power you can see that proportion to the RPM. The best way to improve mechanical efficiency at high speed is to increase the number of cylinders. So, for in improving mechanical efficiency, the best way is to use the number of cylinders, you increase the number of cylinders. So, mechanical efficiency will be improved. Similarly, effect of oil viscosity, higher the oil viscosity, greater is the frictional losses and the effect of cooling water, uh, you can see these all the diagram, these are the, these are the pictures, the frictional losses and oil temperatures, these are the trends you can see here effect of cooling water temperature all these things. And effect of engine load as the load increases the maximum pressure in the cylinder has a tendency to increase slightly this results in slightly higher friction values. Now, the determination of engine friction the these are the methods for with the help of that you can improve the you can evaluate the friction power in by measuring IPBP, Mohr's test, Williams line, motoring, mechanical deceleration method. In brief, you can see that indicated and what is indicated power and brake power measurement, you evaluate friction power equal to IP minus BP. So, you can easily uh, I, I, you obtain from the indicator diagram the FHP to obtain the accurate indicator diagram from the indi, with the help of indicator diagram you evaluate IP and with the help of uh, that you can evaluate friction power. Mohr's test is also another method uh, which is applicable uh, for do both type of engine petrol as well as diesel engine. Here you can also go for, for evaluation Williams line method in another method for evaluate the uh, power he of the engine. So, Williams line method which is applicable for diesel engines only this is the limitation and the gross fuel consumption is plotted against brake power, the line is obtained extended backward to 0 fuel like this, uh, here the uh, let this is BS, BSFC and here I we will take the fuel consumption uh, for uh, different brake powers. So, here it is sorry it is fuel it is taken as like this. So, it is uh, the gross fuel consumption is plotted uh, against BP. So, this is it is brake power and it is fuel consumption. You take it and measured. So, it is 
like this. So, this amount represented the friction power. Similarly, deceleration method is there. In deceleration method, use is made of fact that is running engine left after cutting of the fuel supply, it will decelerate due to the effect of engine friction. This deceleration is made in the polar moment of inertia of the engine known F p can be calculated. So, F p is equal to polar moment of inertia of the engine and initial deceleration. So, deceleration method is one of them also. So, so these are the engine performance and lubrications. We have discussed all these things. Now, this is the exam numerical problems here the all these uh, parameters are given. So, indicated power with the help of wave power over mechanical MCC you can evaluate all these parameters are given. In the problem it is seen that it is design, design by design 3.7 is improved. So, friction power is reduced to 16.3, indicated power is you can from the formula 96.3 the mechanical efficiency will be the formula indicated brake power upon indicated power. So, mechanical efficiency is also can be written as ISFC upon BSFC. So, BSFC is inversely proportional to mechanical efficiency you can evaluate this BSFC. So, saving in fuel is equal to it is 257, 257 minus 20, 240 because you have improved the friction power 3.7 amount. If you improve the friction power 3.7 amount the saving in the fuel will be 1.3 kg mm. per hour. Now, a petrol engine which indicated thermal efficiency of 30 percent has an brake power this all the parameter given. So, ISFC is equal to 3600 upon 4400 this is the formula for ISFC is equal to 3600 into calorific value into thermal efficiency I, ITH. So, with the help of that ISFC comes out here mechanical efficiency from the formula brake power upon indicated power it is evaluated. So, BSFC of 1500 degrees Celsius is equal to ISFC upon mechanical efficiency it is evaluated from here upon mechanical efficiency is from here it comes out here. Similarly, for 2500 rpm you can evaluate the specific fuel consumption for 2500 rpm. So, this was all about in this lecture we have discussed lubrication why it is needed and we have done some numerical problem on that. So, thank you so much.